A lot of people tend to view aquatic macroinvertebrates as a bad thing. They see bugs in the water and they're like, ew, there's bugs in the water, that must mean it's bad water. When in reality, most of the time, it's a good sign when you're seeing things like crayfish and things like helgramites and uh, mayfly larvae. We're really looking for uh, as many different things as possible. We want high diversity. We rely heavily on volunteers to go out and collect data for us to help improve water quality. It's really important to involve community members into these community science programs. Tagging monarchs is a great way to do that. And I think it's great to expand our messaging to include insects overall and invertebrate conservation overall. We're here today with Missouri Stream Team and we're monitoring water quality. So we'll go over how to sample for macroinvertebrates in the stream, how to sample for water chemistry, how to do a visual survey of the stream, and then we'll go over stream discharge, so the amount of stuff that's flowing through the stream. And macroinvertebrates are just invertebrates, things without spines, and macro means we can see them without the need of a microscope or a special tool. We'll go out, we'll take nets, put them in the water, and we'll kind of kick the rocks up, and those macroinvertebrates will flow into the net, and then we'll identify them, and we'll give the stream a water quality rating based on the different kinds of things we're finding in the stream. They're kind of bioindicators for us. So some of them are very sensitive. They can only live in really good water quality. So that kind of gives us an indication of how the water is doing. Besides that, we do chemical parameters. So we measure things like dissolved oxygen. How much oxygen does the stream have so that these animals can survive? And we measure nitrates. All of those paint a larger picture for us of how it's all working together to make a healthier or not so healthy stream. If we uh, ask volunteers across the state to take this data and collect it and send it back to us, uh, we can get baseline data, especially over a long period of time, from areas all across the state where we wouldn't be able to get to them normally. Citizen science is important because scientists can't be everywhere they need to monitor. I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but there are thousands of miles of Missouri streams, and the few scientists that the state can afford to hire cannot be to all those places. But everyday people who like going out to the stream can do that work for them. So we are hosting our ninth annual Monarch Party here on Saturday, and it's an open house style event. We're gonna have tagging available. So if you wanna come in and tag a monarch, that helps scientists to learn a little bit more about their biology, their migration route, and their population. So monarchs do face many challenges. The weather really impacts the monarch population. It can impede their migration journey, their reproductive rates also habitat loss, habitat fragmentation, the use of herbicides and pesticides. So there's a lot of challenges that face monarchs and it's not just monarchs that are facing those challenges, it's other invertebrates and other animals as well. I think the kids enjoyed the butterfly release and them tagging them and be able to go on the internet and see later on if somebody from Mexico got their butterfly. Yeah, community science is absolutely critical. Scientists, they're stretched thin just like everybody else, and there's just not enough boots on the ground. So by engaging community members, we can really get a lot of good data that is really helpful to scientists. And so there's a lot of community science programs out there, not just on monarchs, uh, but on birds and, and other, other animals as well.